Hello, my name is Steve Daniels, and welcome to another episode of Soundorg TV. Today we're going back to Riga in sunny South End in Essex, England, and talking with Ashton Wagner, who's an American that joined Riga about seven years ago. Uh, has been involved with some of their new and most exciting products, the IO and the Kite, and was responsible for introducing a new way of measuring turntables for QC within the factory. Ashton, welcome to Soundorg TV. Let's start by asking you how you came to work from Riga, from this side of the pond, and what you do there. Uh, yeah, so um, thanks thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I ended up at Riga because while I was a student at college, I had actually bought a, a, a Brio R, um, kind of independent of wanting to work here. Uh, I was shopping around for hi-fi equipment, needed a new amplifier, and I listened to quite a bit, and the the Brio really, really stood out to me. So uh, I got the Brio, I eventually got a, uh, a Riga turntable and kind of at the same time, um, I was doing my degree and I decided I wanted to have a go at working in the audio industry. Um, I, I wanted to try to work at a, kind of a, a smaller size company, uh, audio kind of fit the bill. And so I sent my uh, resume and cover letter off to Roy and uh, a couple of, couple of weeks later I heard back I did a, a work experience as a student and um, you know seven years later here here I am uh, so my my role here now is I'm a, a, a product design engineer we we all wear a lot of hats around here so I'm involved in quite a lot of different areas within the company um, but my, my main job role is to work on the design of new products, especially uh, the electronics side, uh, electromagnetism, um, some of the mechanical stuff. So it's, it's been a really great experience. I've gotten to work on a lot of really exciting uh, projects. And I think you've had a, a, a fairly major hand in what I think are two of the most exciting products recently from Riga, the IO amplifier and the Kite loudspeaker. Yeah, um, so those have kind of been the first two major products that I've had a really big, big role in, um, and it, it, it's really a team effort here. Um, something like the the IO, uh, it, it takes a lot of its DNA from the Brio. Uh, we, when we started out, we were trying to figure out how to offer as much of the sound quality uh, that the Brio had uh, at a, a lower price point. Um, so. Uh, Terry, I mean, the, the, the circuit is still very much kind of his, his baby. The, um, a lot of the circuit is shared with the Brio. Um, but we had to figure out how to take the power levels down, how to take some of the cost out and, and still preserve as much of that, that sound quality as possible. Um, the other area that we put a lot of work into that enabled us to, to make the IO uh, was the construction, the casework, the assembly process. Uh, we had to make things smaller, uh, simplify all the, all the build procedures. Um, and <laughs> the Brio, when we did that, that was, that was hard enough uh, trying to squeeze everything in. So the IO kind of doubly so. And so I did a lot of work with the team of trying to figure out how to fit everything into this, into this package. And, um, we, we did some kind of radical new things in one sense, but then also uh, went back in a direction that some of the, the really old products had gone in in, in another. Um, and we've ended up with uh, a, a really great product, I think. Um, it's just nice to see that it's it's had such a great reception from, from the public. Um, it's kind of defining characteristic is that it was designed with sound quality as the first and foremost concern. So we've not tried to squeeze extra power into a small box. We've not you know, put extra inputs in or Bluetooth or digital inputs or anything. It's just a, a sound quality first product and it, it's, it's really succeeded at that. Well, it's a phenomenal product and the power and the delivery that it does give is, is simply amazing from that size box. 
So we've been stunned by how good it, it is um, when you partner it with, it with a, a really good entry type system. You get an amazing performance. A few weeks ago, we were talking to Roy about the kite speaker and uh, Riga's history with speakers. And he was explaining about cabinets and uh, the costs involved. And I know years ago when I was over at the factory, you were showing me some prototypes of what became the kite. So can you go into the history of the kite again and just how you arrived at that and, and kind of as you say, thinking outside of the box. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as you say, the um, the, uh, the cabinet for a loudspeaker is very often the uh, most expensive part, actually. Um, so when we did the same thing for Kite, we did the IO, where we wanted to try to take as much of the sound quality from the RX-1, in this case, uh, and, and bring it uh, further down in price, um, we knew that was the area we had to target. Now, Roy is always trying to think outside of the box. He's always trying to find uh, opportunities that other people have overlooked and um, trying to use alternative materials and ideas and, and uh, construction procedures. So um, doing, a, doing a molded cabinet using the uh, phenolic resin uh, was quite a good fit for the product. So, you know, we, th this is going back a few years, we were playing around with all kinds of shapes and constructions in the CAD, trying to come up with a, an idea that was feasible and looked good and would offer performance. We had to go and find new suppliers to work with uh, to make the tool and to actually produce the, produce the molding. Um, we used some new methodologies and procedures that we hadn't before. So it's, it's very much a, a groundbreaking product for us. But the, the end result is this, this cabinet which we think looks great, uh, performs great, and allows us to make a, a pretty good sense at a pretty, pretty reasonable price point. Yeah, I think the performance is uh, just out of this world. The cabinet looks very different, but uh, I think it's still okay. acceptable in, in a home. It looks good, and it's a very fresh take on what a loudspeaker is and, and looks like. Um, when you came to Riga, I think you, you started working on the, the speed of tables and, and looking at that and the um, checking of, of speed and what the factory were doing. Can you go into some of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the WOW flutter uh, measurement system, as, as we call it, actually started life when I was here as a student. I had to go back to go back to college to finish my degree, and we do design projects with with companies as part of our as part of our education. And so I was I was really keen to see if you know Riga could sponsor a project. And indeed, they had this idea. They wanted to replace our old measurement system, which, like a lot of turntable speed measurement systems, uses a, a vinyl record with a, a test tone cut into the record. However, this is subject to all of the uh, errors and inaccuracies uh, in, in numerical terms in cutting and producing a, a vinyl record. So um, it was me and a couple of students. We uh, went away and kind of looked at the current state of measurement systems and uh, with, with modern uh, encoder sensors and the, uh, the encoder wheels that we use to uh, capture the measurement um, the level of accuracy is is really impressive and that that enabled us to create a system that could measure the the speed of the turntable and the the speed variations down to a very very low level um, that that system came back to the factory we put it into production to help us with our qc testing and we've been kind of iterating on that and developing it further ever since um, it's helped out quite a lot with the development of the new EBLT drive belt, which gives us a really drastic reduction in, in speed inconsistency with the turntables. And it even found its way into the speed control system for the NIAD. So if, if 
uh, someone purchased an IAD, they, they actually get one of the encoder wheels that we use to test in the factory. You were also involved on the Atlas um, Mark II, which is a, a tracking force measurement for those unfamiliar with the product. Can you tell us how you got involved and, and what you did to improve accuracy on that? Yeah, so the, the Atlas Mark II was kind of the first product I really, really kind of ran with myself and took responsibility for. Uh, we took what we learned on the uh, the first Atlas and just fed that back into the product to try to improve it even further. So we've made something that's got an even larger measurement range. Uh, it should be even more accurate, even more uh, reliable for people. And, and the Atlas has been a, a great product. We were kind of surprised. We never, we never thought people would have this level of interest in them. It's been a, a really nice little product for us, and it's really easy. We have dozens of these littered around the uh, the factory, so it's, it's a great little tool. Great. So, Ash, for anyone interested in getting involved in audio and engineering, any advice that you would give? I'd say just get, get your hands dirty. Uh, engineering is a, is a hands-on thing, and there's no replacement for trying to make something and, and make it work. Uh, that last 5% is often the, the hardest part, and the, the experience is invaluable. Excellent. So I'm going to ask you some quick-fire questions. Favorite thing of working for Riga? Ooh, probably the food. <laughs> we've, we've got a, an on-site uh, chef that uh, makes hot lunches for us every day, so that's that's really nice when you're working hard and you can take a break and eat, eat in the canteen. But um, other than that, the, the reason I came to Riga was getting to work on all of these different projects and, and really getting a chance to be hands-on with all this technology and work with, work with all these great people here. Okay, next quick question. Thing you most like about England? You can't say the weather. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yes, don't go there. Probably. Probably traveling. Uh, I've, I've gotten to travel around the UK a fair bit. I've, I've got a motorbike, so I just pack up a tent and go go see stuff. And then being able to travel to you know the rest of Europe as well, it's it's been a great great experience. And thing you miss most about the US? Ooh, I mean, obviously, besides my, my friends and family, right. um, maybe the food as well. So I'm seeing a, a thread going through these questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, you said at the beginning that you got involved with this because you bought a hi-fi system and enjoy music. What are you? What's some of your favorite albums that you're currently playing? Oh, uh, that's a difficult question. There's there's so many good albums, and also now everyone can, can make fun of my uh, my taste in music. But um, uh, with with vinyl, uh, if I'm if I'm spinning something, uh, there's kind of a, a few albums that. I don't know. There's just a mood, and there's no there's no common thread that really connects them all. Something like uh, Spiderland by Slyn, um or uh, Three Ps by Beta Band. Uh, there's certain genres, I think, of music as well that just lend themselves to the the medium. Um, a lot of a lot of different rock genres. You know, Jack White is uh, the second album he did with the Rack and Tours, uh, Concerts of Lonely. That that's a good one. Um, something by Steve Albini. So. Ash, thank you so much for joining us on Soundorg TV today. Uh, it's been great getting your insight on the company and how you got over to Riga, and we hope to see you on a future episode. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Take care. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, if you're looking for a Riga retailer to audition products, go to soundorg.com, and there you will find a link. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode, looking more in depth at what Riga are doing in the UK, and hope to see you on a future episode of Soundorg TV. Thanks.